Bennett Davidson here with the Euro Hoop Life podcast. We'll be talking about Lithuania. Uh, Coach, how are you doing today? And give me the city that you were coaching in. You said this was your first experience overseas. What was it like? Hey, how you doing? Uh, great to be with you. Uh, I was in Klaipeda, Lithuania, okay. which is the largest port city on the Baltic Sea. And the name of our team was Neptunus. Neptunus. Okay, so how cold was it? What was it like up there? I actually played against, I think, Lithus Rethus is in Lithuania. Latilos Rethus is in Vilnius. Yes, I went up there. It was nice and cold. They had a good fan base. They had an awesome stadium. So give me the give me your experience over there. What was it like over there as your first overseas experience? Right. It's my, my first experience going overseas. Uh, fortunately enough, I've worked in the past with uh, – Mr. Donnie Nelson from Dallas Mavericks. And, you know, he's been a big influence in Lithuania since the they became free in the country and, you know, first played in the Olympics in 92. Yep. So fortunately enough, he got me a, a job over there and I was spent two years over there. Uh, extremely cold place, as you, as you know from your short experience. Being there two years, uh, it, was, it was pretty cold. It's one of those places I think they have, like, uh, they run the hot water pipes under the floor so that they can take the heat and make the floors warmer. I think we sit in the hotel. It was like, why are my feet sweating right now? It was like, because the floors, they had floor heaters in the place. Right, exactly. Uh, all kind of tricks over there. Uh, once it snows, there's snow on the ground for five months. So the whole season you're there. Yeah, for the whole season I'm there. And the first year I was there was the very first year of the Baltic League. Yep, I played in the Baltic League. I think we was in Croatia or uh, Slovenia. Right. So we, well, this year, the first year of this, the, the Baltic League, we played in, uh, of course, Lithuania, uh, Latvia, and Estonia okay. were the other two countries. There was like four, three or four teams from each, uh, each uh, country in the league. So we got to travel to Estonia and Latvia, and those are all the same. You know, part of the original Soviet Union, the Baltic states. Those interesting experience. On the western side of Russia. Yes, yes. All on the Baltic Sea, too. What was a city like? What would a player expect if he went over there by himself or had family members with him? What would they expect um, if they got to the city? What was it like? How big was the city? Um, probably, I would say, the fifth largest city in Lithuania. Lithuania as a whole is only three to four million people total. Okay. So okay. none of this, even the capital city is going to be less than a, you know, four. Oh, to totally. Uh, that's the you know that's the neighborhood in China, yeah, <laughs> two hundred fifty thousand. Exactly. <laughs> so, but uh, extremely nice people. Uh, the one thing about Lithuania versus all the other countries in Europe is basketball is their number one sport. It's not soccer. Okay. And, and as everyone knows, the history uh, Lithuania has been extremely successful. In basketball, they've won a couple of bronze medals and they you know, repeatedly ranked in the top five every year. So any player that is going to go over there, it's going to be basketball first for them when they get there. Awesome. So when you get there, what is the facilities like? Um, like you said, it's a small town. And they have a, um, Usually the small towns have a huge fan base, and especially in a country where basketball is their number one sport. Um, what was it like when you got there, the facilities, the living situations, the – you know, go into the details of what the, someone would expect once they got there. Right. Um, certainly, um, at that at that time in Lithuania, most of the facilities that you would go to the cities uh, were a little bit smaller. Uh, most of the gyms at that time were two to three thousand people, except for Lativas, Ritas, and Zagras, which are the two national teams. I mean, that year I was there, it was incredible. Uh, Ritas and Zagras both were ended up being in the final 16 of Euro League. Yeah, so, you know, from your experience, those are strong teams. And at that time, too, Lithuania had six guys in the NBA at that at that time. Yeah, so every – every it, talented, skilled men yeah, out there playing. Marcus. Yeah, even though – you know, back to your point, even though they're small arenas, that was my first experience uh, – as you would see when you're watching the TV and seeing the soccer games, yeah. the guys at the games beating the drums and raising the banners That's and all that. So that was my first experience with that. Even though most of the gyms were only two and 3,000 uh, people, uh, they were always loud and raucous. Yep. Nice. 
Well, let's get into like and like you said. And so, how many teams are in that league? Um, I know Lithuania is like you said, one of the top basketball leagues. You just got to be able to say, hey, I'm willing to live in the northern hemisphere of the the top part of the northern hemisphere. What's it like once um, in the actual league of Lithuania? Right. Uh, when I was there, there were 12 teams in the league. And they do have a second division, which is, gets supported really well in Lithuania. Okay. And I think it, it, it varies from year to year that, uh, you know, obviously finances with teams come and go. Uh, but I think, I think typically there are always 10 to 12 teams in the league. Uh, one thing that's really helped uh, Lithuania now versus when I was there is I think back in 2011, uh, Lithuania had the European Championships. Okay. So for them to get qualified for that, like the, the city I was in and all the other small cities with the teams, they had to build new arenas yeah. for to get that opportunity. So now, typically, most of the cities there have nice little five to 7,000 seat mini arenas oh, there. So it's Lipa's really a like last 10 years. Small, like Lipa's Ritas, they had a smaller-sized big arena. I mean, it was an official... Size arena. It was oh, Rita's, it, Rita's has an NBA arena. Yeah, it's it was yeah. top notch. So when you were there, how were the um, how were the finances? How do you how do you think of that whole situation went financially in um, that country? You never really know what to expect when you're dealing with the Baltic countries. Uh, Rita's and Zagreb has a major budget. Yes. You know, if you're they're 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 bringing in high level players because they're playing in either the Champions Cup, Euro Cup or Euro League yep. every year. Uh, some of the smaller teams, Cholet, those teams will play in a little bit smaller, but typically there'll be four or five teams every year in Lithuania that will play in the various cups throughout Europe. Awesome. And awesome. and most of the finances, I think I feel like those are pretty good, but I would say probably on the average, the smaller clubs, you know, a foreigner player, you know, it, it, I would think it's more of an entry-level job for him. A job where he's probably going to make around five thousand dollars a month for those clubs. So Whereas if you're at Retis or Zalgris, they might pay you forty or fifty thousand a month, yeah. depending on your level. Yeah, so it's a big difference. Yeah, and I like you said, it was like a, I want to just kind of reiterate that topic of saying that if you know if you're looking to come out of college and play for a, a good quality, I think Lithuania ha is known for its basketball IQ compared to if you're going to like a Romania or a Hungary and Austria. I think sure. you can deal with better bas quality basketball, but use that as a stepping stone if you are one of those fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth place teams. And realize that, hey, this is a good place to start. Go out, get your numbers, play against high caliber players, and then skip over to another country if so uh, one of the top teams doesn't pick you up. Uh, of course, if you're in starting your career in Lithuania, you know, no knock on, like you said, Hungary or Romania or anywhere like that, but certainly on your resume, uh, other countries and other teams are going to give you more respect if you start your career in Lithuania. Well, anything about the finances? How do you think the whole league is as, as a whole? Um, the team that you were coaching for, um, did, did you have any financial issues or any problems or delays? No, it, it was pretty it, it was pretty solid. Uh, you know, the, the team never missed any payments. You know, maybe once in a while it was a few days late or whatever. Okay. Uh, you know, that was one of my first jobs, too. And just like any of the young players, you know, we weren't getting all that much money. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. th there wasn't a big burden on the team. But they took care of us as far as an apartment. I had a car. Uh, the city was nice. Uh, they they had some of the best food and beer you could have in the whole in the hall of Europe over there. They had this beer called Chavita Reese. Yeah. It took me about two months to say it, but it was voted <laughs> twice. It was voted twice the gold medal beer in Lithuania. Awesome. So, uh, or, or in Europe, I should say. In Europe, I should say. Okay. So, as far as having a lifestyle of, you know, and it was a meat and potatoes place. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe some cold borscht soup, some beet soup or something like that out of the ordinary. But it was basically steak, potato, and vegetables. So it was pretty easy as far as a foreigner being able to eat there. Coach Dean Murray, thank you for your time on uh, Lithuania. Um, any last few words on uh, how people can get in contact with you if they have any questions about Lithuania? Uh, you know, you can find me on link, LinkedIn where, where, where we uh, connected at. Yep. And uh, anybody's welcome to write me at any time if they have any questions about anything. Coach, thank you for your time and your knowledge. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot.